Today's lesson is using the distributive property and GCF. So our problem is to write the sum of numbers as the product of their GCF and another sum. And there are a lot of words in these directions, so let's break it down to make it easier. First of all, the sum of numbers just means that we're going to be adding some numbers together, and we will call that number A and B for now. The product means that we're going to have some type of multiplication involved. So product has to do with multiplication. The GCF is something that we will find by listing out the factors. And another sum just means we will have some other kind of addition happening. So the GCF, or the greatest common factor, will be written first. The product means we multiply, but we want to use parentheses to keep it grouped nicely. And the other sum will go on the inside, and we'll call that lowercase a and lowercase b for now. So let's try this with numbers. Let's say we have 27 plus 18, and we want to use this method. The first step is to find the greatest common factor between those two numbers. And I like using a t-chart to list out the factors because it keeps it organized and you have less chance of uh, accidentally missing factors. So 1 times 27 and 3 times 9 will give us the product of 27. Then you list out the factors for 18. And this is one area where knowing your math facts is really going to help you because you'll become less frustrated if you can do uh, mental math and just know what you need to multiply to get to those uh, numbers. So going through our list, the greatest common number that we have is 9. So our GCF is 9. And we're going to write that first in our setup. And then we will have the product with the other sum written on the inside. So 9 with our parentheses and that other sum. And how do we find those other numbers? Well, we have to go back to the original number of 27 and know what the factors are that you can multiply to get to 27. So 9 times something will give us 27, and we should know that 9 times 3 is going to do that. Our other number, 18, 9 times something gives us 18, and that should be pretty obvious that 9 times 2 is going to give us 18. And the t-chart also helps because it already puts those factors together. And so if we look back at our original number, well, we always want to check our work. So here's one way you can check it. We know that the parentheses means to multiply. So 3 times 9 is 27. We keep our addition, and then 9 times 2 is 18, which is our original addition problem. One more thing you can do is you can have the 9 with the parentheses and add the inside numbers to give you 5, and if you multiply that out, you get 45. Another check is to add the original numbers together and you will get 45. So there are many ways that you can rearrange this to get an answer, but why go through all this extra work? Well, here's why. Let's do the same problem again, and we're going to change one thing about it. So we're still finding all of the factors of 27 and 18. And this time, what if we thought that the greatest common factor was 3? And we use that in our problem setup. So we will have the 3 times another sum. Well, we can still multiply 3 times 9 to get 27, and we can multiply 3 times 6 to give us 18. So it looks like it could work, but the problem is that between 9 and 6, we still have more common factors. 3 is another common factor on the inside. And that tells us that we did not actually find the greatest common factor on the outside. So this is the whole point why we can use a distributive property, is to see if we found the GCF. So now the rest of the video is just two problems for you to try on your own. So please pause it and do the work and then come back and check it to see if it all works out at the end. So the numbers we're using are 30 and 54. The first step is to find the factors that we can multiply to get to each number. 
listing them out. And again, I really want to emphasize knowing your multiplication tables will make this process so easy. Otherwise, it gets really frustrating and you end up doing a lot of work on the side of your page because you will end up having to do a lot of division problems to see what you can divide that original number by to get the factors. One trick I like though is that if the two digits can be added together and they are divisible by three, then the whole number is divisible by three. So five and four is nine, which is divisible by three, which means the whole number 54 is divisible by three. So when you're done with the list, you wanna compare them and find the GCF. And that should stand out that six is the GCF. We're going to write the numbers instead of just adding them, we want to use the GCF. So we're going to write them as a product of the GCF and another sum. So the more times you say this, the easier it gets to really understand what they're asking you to do. So first we write the GCF, which is six. Product means we're going to multiply and another sum will go on the inside. And we find that other number by going back to our original number and getting the factors we can multiply to get to that original number. So six times five is 30, six times nine is 54. Those are the final factors that we need. There's nothing else in common, so that works. Here's the last example that is worked out for you. So we have 63 and 15. The first step is always to find the GCF. Some other tricks for knowing what a number is divisible by is that if it's an even number at the end, then it's divisible by two. If it ends in zero or five, most likely it's divisible by five. If you can add the digits and they are divisible by three, then the whole number is divisible by three. And there are many more tricks that you can figure out. But the best thing is just to memorize your math facts. All right, we found that the GCF was three. So we want to write the numbers as a product of their GCF and another sum. So that means three goes on the outside. Product means we're going to multiply and the other sum will go on the inside. So we go back to our original number of 63. Three times 21 gives us 63 and three times five gives us 15. And this all works out to give us our original numbers, so we are good to go. The last example is to write the numbers as a product of their GCF and another sum. And I'd like you to pause and solve this one. Um, I don't work it out for you, I just give you the answer in the next slide. And the answer is 28 is the GCF. And in parentheses, we have 3 plus 2. All right, hopefully you got that. If not, make sure you come back and pause the video so that you can try it again. And remember that the more times you do this and the more times you practice it the right way, the easier it becomes. All right, thanks for watching.